Senator, I want to ask, uh, I think we're still still haven't heard from the governor on the Supreme Court decision about the Voting Rights Act. Um, how do you feel that, that the governor has in common with you? You obviously have a strong opinion. I do. I do because I feel very strongly about, uh, you know, our, our voting rights, our, our civil rights. This is a, this, uh, the voting rights legislation is the signature, one of the signature accomplishments of the civil rights movement. You know, when Lyndon Dane Johnson signed it with Martin Luther King at his side and so many people have given their lives to protect and create a, a, an atmosphere where people weren't afraid to vote. I mean, I, I have to, you know, really question, you know, this is, is this really 2013 that we're refighting this battle where, you know, people had to face uh, impediments or obstacles to voting? You know, I remember reading about the days when people had, had literacy tests before they could vote, had to pay a poll tax. And, um, you know, when it's interesting that when uh, Barack Obama was up for re-election, all of a sudden we have all of these um, uh, voter, voter ID laws that people are, are passing. And um, I, I think that, uh, you know, I think the best laid plans, uh, thank God they didn't come to pass, but it was a little too close for comfort for many. And all of a sudden, just Chief Justice Roberts writes this opinion saying that, oh yeah, the days of Jim Crow are gone, so we don't need to have any oversight of these states that have essentially legitimate, legitimized bigotry. And, um, you know, so gutted the, the Voting Rights Act. And, you know, I think that for this governor to, this is somebody who's not averse to giving his opinion, when it, even when it's unsolicited. And now it has been solicited on at least three occasions, and he's been extremely dismissive, saying, oh yes, I was in my car, I can read just so much. I was reading the Comptroller's report, I think. And then one time he said he was on vacation. And, you know, it's, it's just reprehensible, I think. And this is someone who, in his mind, at least, would be president. And for somebody who has those aspirations to, to not have an opinion or not think it's important enough to frame an opinion on an issue as fundamental to democracy as voting rights, I think speaks volumes about his, his future. Um, so what do you think could be better about New Jersey's access to the ballot? Like, I know there's uh, been attempts to expand early voting. Yes. I've heard you speak forcefully about that on the floor of the Senate. Mm -hmm. um, there's also a lawsuit that would, uh, you know, trying to, to make it so the state offers the option to do same-day voter registration instead of having to register 21 days in advance of the election. How do you feel about those reforms, and what do you think we could do better as, as New Jersey? Well, we need a governor that would actually sign them, and this governor has shown that he, he's refused to sign the early voting legislation. Uh, Nia Gill's legislation is just a, it would have gone a long way to increasing voter participation. Uh, this governor vetoed it, saying, citing that it was too expensive. So he's not, interesting, he's not willing to invest money in increasing voter turnout, but he doesn't hesitate a moment when he's spending untold millions of dollars on a senseless special election for the United States Senate to fill Frank Lautenberg's seat, instead of having it, as you know, on the same date as the gubernatorial and all the legislative freeholder races on November 5th, Tuesday, November 5th, we're having it 20 days before that, on a Wednesday to boot. It's costing the taxpayers money. It's going to increase, uh, it's going to increasingly disenfranchise people because they don't know about the, I mean, talk to people, and we are trying to make sure people know about it, and they just don't. So you need to have a governor that has uh, uh, that as a priority, and unfortunately, this governor does not.